Hi, this is MC Shetty for a new episode of my modding tutorials for 1.17. It has been a while, so what do you do when you haven't worked on your mod for a while? You check if you're using the latest version of Forge and if needed you update. And we will do that because there was a breaking change and we have to fix our mod for that. So first to upgrade Forge, the first thing you do is actually go check at uh, the Forge site, see what the latest version is for 1.17. You can also check the change log, so you can see what has changed. And we are currently at 53. So let's check our cradle. Um, yeah, we are way behind. So let's fix that. That's all you have to do. You click refresh. And this takes a while, so we let it run. Alright, it finished. It's safer to regen this one, and it will give that error again, I suppose. Uh, but apparently it doesn't work, so I'll just ignore it. Ah, uh, it didn't give an error this time. So, okay. And now we build, we check if everything is fine. And it will not be because, yeah, everything around harvesting and tool uh, has uh, changed. So we need to fix that. So, yeah, Forge 1.17 isn't yet at a stable uh, phase at the moment. So breaking changes are still allowed. They try to avoid it, of course, but if it's needed, it's uh, needed. The harvesting has changed a lot in vanilla, so that's why... Forge had to adapt and it hadn't adapted yet. So, but b the change is easy, that's basically it. You get the item from the stack and you check if it's the correct tool for drops. That's it. That's everything you need to do to upgrade Forge. Let's commit that. Update Forge to 353. Like that. Um, there's another thing I'd like to do. You know that right now, if you go uh, to here, actually, no, this is fourth item. That's not forge item. That's not relevant. Uh, but for example, uh, let's check this. Yeah, you see these these parameter names. Um, that's because they are not included by the official Mojang mappings. They only have names for classes and method names, but not for parameters. But there's a new thing uh, made by some people, which is called Parchment. And by using that, you can get correct names for these two, and that's very useful during development. So we will set that up, uh, because it's very helpful. You can find more information about that here. So there are a few things you have to do. Um, to make sure you are the correct version of Forge, the first thing you actually need to do is uh, yeah, first check that you are using the right Java and then refresh dependencies. That will update uh, Forge Gradle to the latest version, which is required for this. It uh, needs a little time. By yeah, it finished. But by the way, on Windows you wouldn't add this in front because uh, that's li Linux. So you just type Gradle V. You can actually also do it from within the comment line in IntelliJ. It's up to you. But basically we need to add to do a few things in to build Gradle to have this. So in the beginning, uh, after this one, you need to add this line. And we need this line. And we need this line. And then we need to change the mappings. Um, actually, so this is just, this is no longer the latest. 
the one that you can use right now is this. So after changing that, the only thing you need to do is re Gradle refresh again. So let's do that. It already finished. And normally, if you then go to this, oh yeah, this is the wrong one. Yeah, you need to reopen them because it actually has changed. Uh, yeah, you see all these parameters have names that make more sense. Um, yeah, and that goes for every, almost everything within uh, Minecraft. So that's very useful. Use parchment for better parameter names like that. Okay, so this is enough for project setup. In the rest of the tutorial, I want to talk about configuration. So to do that, I've made some preparations. I'm just going to copy it. It's easier and explain what it does. I choose to do this with a config class that I put here. So basically what happens here? Um, we will have a client config and a server config. So let's first talk about that. This is uh, something from Forge. There are actually three types. Uh, this is not implemented yet. So three types of configs. You have common, client and server. So let's start with, start with client and server first. Client is easy. That's all configuration that's only relevant client side. Uh, these can be things that have to do with rendering or colors or whatever. Um, so they are not available on the server. They are also not needed on the server. Server is everything you need server side, but it's also synced to the client when a client joins. So clients can also access it. Uh, you can also access it client side. This is probably the most useful one to use, um, but you should be aware. So client side configuration and common as well, uh, they will appear in the instance in the config folder here. You will see that in a moment when we start. While server side configuration, they go with the, the world. So every world has its own server side configuration. So that has some implications because that means that you cannot easily use it for uh, ore generation, for example. To configure ore gen, you can not use server because, yeah, you first have to create the world before you have a server config. Uh, you can use a default config, like here, uh, which will be used. But, yeah, it's annoying to have to change that, to, to have it move over to there. So for ores, you typically use common. common is uh, one you should not use that much, but it's useful for things like, for example, ore generation, things you have to configure before the world is created. It's available on both server and client, but usually you will only use this on the server side. Um, so typically I recommend you use client and server. And these two configs go to the config folder right here. This config goes to the world and you have default configs for the default of this. So that's important. In our tutorial, we will use client config and server config. We have these six values that we want to use. So these are for the generator, how much it generates per tick, how much it sends out per tick, and the total capacity. This one is how much does the demo block use per tick, and how much capacity does it have? And then this is a client side uh, value. It's this vertical particle speed. So you all always use these uh, to store the config. And I will show you in a moment how you actually use them. You have to in call this. Uh, so let's go to our uh, to this one and config in it. Very important. Um, configuration, I, I put these in this order, but note that this initialization doesn't 
it does it will not read the configuration right here so configuration happens late in the initialization after registration that's very important even if you would exchange this it doesn't matter um, because these methods just initialized this they don't actually do it yet that happens later through events and so on but it's important to note that registration is first and configuration is later but configuration is before um, fml comment setup event so let's put that here registration config reading uh, for client plus common and fml common setup event and then later when the world loads you have a config reading for server because these are part of the world so this happens at setup at after world load so that's very important so that implies that you cannot use configuration values to enable or disable registration and you shouldn't do that either it's best to have everything that you need registered even if you want to disable it for some purpose if you want to disable it it's best to do it by for example disabling the recipes um, yeah that's a much better way because conditionally uh, allowing registration as it, uh, some can cause problems because yeah if a world was created with it enabled and then it's later disabled uh, that's not a good idea um, okay so to actually use these let's go to the generator and there are a few okay here we want to use config dot dot get um, config generator send tick get and um, where was the other one uh, the capacity that's uh, with energy that will be here config punt. Yeah. yeah also I didn't explain yet so to initialize the config you need to do this so you make a builder for uh, the configuration and you can organize this in sections for example here we have the generator section so push pop don't forget this pop otherwise it will keep nesting and here's a new section for the demo block and for every uh, thing in the section so this is done when the mod is constructed but this will not actually read it yet that's done later so there's a comment this is the name the default the minimum and the maximum and so on for client side is exactly the same so exact that this is a, a, dub, a double value and then finally you register yeah you call use the builder to actually build the config and then you register it to the right type this will make sure that later when the configs are read or read uh, they are correctly used um, then we also need to do this for the demo block so yeah this usage we can't do it like that anymore demo use per tick and actually what did we use um, let's put it back at 10 okay and then we have the capacity you could also make this configurable but it's okay actually let's do this times two and then 
only the client side that's config demo part of like that okay let's try it out that's all there is to it it's relatively easy all right um, uh, game mode survival so this should still work yeah everything works as before let's check the config so if you go check in the config folder you will now find the tutorial client because client site is put in the config like this and in the save file you will now find these cleanly separated per section you can go as deep as you want uh, it's up to you that was it configuration is pretty easy hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions feel free to ask see you next time Bye-bye.